In this lesson, we'll learn how to create subregions and also change the material of a topo surface. So our land is looking pretty barren right now. It looks like a really bad drought is going on. So I want to add some green to this design. So how do I go about doing that? Well, definitely first thing we're going to do, we can either split a surface or use the subregion tool. And we've gone halfway there. So what I want to do is I'm going to split this surface here so I can basically have two surfaces. One will be for my concrete, which will go around the back area between the building and the retaining wall. But I also want to have grass kind of leading up to the front of this building that we'll later on place some more green planting components into. So we can really quickly jump back to our site here. And what we can do is we can go ahead and split that surface now that we know how to do it. And we'll do it really quick. So I'm going to go split surface, this surface, now that we have two separate. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this in. So I'm just going to assume, make a quick assumption that our concrete needs to go out around some, somewhere like this. And actually, I'll make this a little bit more interesting. Bring this to about right there. Again, when you're splitting, you really don't need to make it a closed loop. It's all about splitting a surface into two different regions here. So we'll go ahead and grab this and we'll draw this one in here as well. And I'm going to trim this off really quick so that I don't have any intersecting or edges there. So we'll green check mark. Now we split that region. So now we have this one main region here in the middle. So what if I wanted to change this to concrete? Well, I can do so very easily by highlighting my region. And in my properties here, you'll notice materials and under our materials and finish section. Click inside this box where it says pie category. And what happens is that other little box will appear. And now we have a wide variety of things to actually choose from. So currently it looks like what we do have is earth. But for that concrete pad, I'm going to need a lightweight concrete here. So we'll see if we can't find lightweight concrete. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'll say OK. And we're getting a warning message here. But... This one can be ignored. It's just Revit letting us know that, hey, your surface patterns might not or will not actually appear on your topographical surface. So that's okay. I'm more concerned about color and differentiation of material at this point and really not too much into realism. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay. And that's how we change that. So how does that look in 3D? A lot more realistic than it looked before. So let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for grass. Now with grass, we're running into a little bit more of a challenge. So if we wanted to change this one here to grass as well as this one, we can select both. And underneath the material, we'll do the same thing before. So where it says by category, click out here to the right. And now let's go in here and search and see if we can't find grass. So I'm going to say grass. Nothing for grass. How about vegetation? Let's try vegetation. Nothing. So what that means for us is we're going to have to go ahead and create our own material. So while we're in here, I'm going to show you how we can quickly do that. So we can come to this area here, and we can either create or duplicate material. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to say, click on that little down arrow, and I'm going to say, create new material. And there's our new material. So let's right-click on that together, and let's give it a name. And it's going to give it a name, something that makes sense for us. So we're going to say, grass for site model. Now we're not done yet. I want to apply color to this so I can see that differentiation of surfaces and materials. So for shading, I'm going to go ahead and apply, oh, maybe this green color. We'll keep that one in mind. For surface pattern, you remember the warning message we got? Well, you really won't, our surface pattern really won't show up uh, in that particular view. So, but I do want to have a cut pattern once I do get to elevation so that you can see the difference between earth and maybe the footing or anything that goes uh, below the ground. So let's add a cut pattern to that. So I'm going to click on that. And there's one for earth here as you scroll down right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK for that. So one more thing is when we create, well, once we get really far enough in this model, I want to be able to create a nice realistic view. So I need to make sure that this color is going to be there in my appearances. The graphics is going to take care of my consistent color view. Appearance is going to take care of my more realistic views. So I'm going to go to color, pick the same color, I'm going to say OK, apply, and OK. So when I click out here, now we have new material. Pretty cool stuff, right? So we're not done yet. We can actually use, if we work with splitting, well, we can actually use the subregion tool if you wanted to, to create things like sidewalks and stuff like that. So if I were to jump to this one, back to our site view, and let's say we wanted to do a subregion here. I'm just going to do a subregion without creating a, a separate topo surface and that's going to be the benefit of it. Now with your subregion the key is you're going to want to make sure 
that you are creating a closed loop system. So I'm just going to draw my lines here, making sure that I'm either tracing or snapping exactly where I need to go. I'm going to assume my point starts there. I'm going to snap to this endpoint, and I'm going to go ahead and close off my loop here. So again, closed loop system means all the corners meet together, and there's no intersecting or ex extended edges out there. If there are, just go ahead and trim it out. So once we've drawn that in place, go ahead and hit your green check mark. Take a look at what we've created, a whole new region. So this one here, we can actually select it. Go ahead and apply concrete material to it if you wanted to. We'll say, uh, what was it, Light, lightweight concrete is what we added to the other one. We'll be consistent and do the same thing here. I know you're around here somewhere. There you go. Apply. OK. And there we go. So we'll jump to 3D view and take a look at our progress here. So really easy, really cool stuff. So we have a little bit more time left on this particular course. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually handle some of this stuff here just really quickly. All we really got to do is edit the profile of this wall. So I can actually, and I want it to kind of follow this slope the best I can. Just select it, edit profile. We can just simply do some work here. I'm going to grab those two lines and I'm going to drop them down right about there. I'm going to remove my constraints, hit my green check mark. That's a little bit more realistic as far as my uh, retaining wall. A lot less concrete, possibly saving on material and labor there. Let's do the same thing to the other side real quick while we're here. So select it, edit profile. I'm going to select these two sides and I'm just going to bring this one down. Remove the constraints, green check mark, and we're in business. So there you go. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we can work with some of the site components now that you know how to do some of the basics with the site modeling. We'll plant some trees and some shrubs and bring this uh, site model to life. So I'll meet you in the next lesson.